Hey everybody, this is Mr. Good, and I, uh, I'm here with a few of my little RC helicopters. Uh, Miss Antar asked me to make a little video about how helicopters fly to go along with the fluid dynamics lesson that she put up. <clears throat> so, we'll start with the little one. Um, this one is a little fixed pitch helicopter, which means that the blades don't change pitch. It just gets lift by spinning the blades faster and faster. The same way an airplane gets lift, it doesn't have lift when it's moving slow, but as they move faster down the runway, it gets more and more lift, and then they can take off. With this, <coughs> the faster the blades spin, the more lift it creates, and so then it goes up. The other part of, uh, there are two other components to the control system of the helicopter, and that is the swash plate, which is controlled by two little servos here that move. What they do is they affect um, the direction that the helicopter flies back, forward, and side to side. And the way that that works is by adding pitch to one blade by tilting this whole thing. Right, see how one levels out and the other one, well, the other one gets more pitch? Right, by tilting one like that, you can add more lift one way and make it go forward and back. And the other part of the control is the tail rotor. It has a little tiny tail rotor back here. which spins. And the reason you need a tail rotor is because when this main rotor spins, the body of the helicopter wants to spin the opposite direction. Right? And what the tail rotor does, or the anti-torque rotor as it's sometimes called, is it provides <clears throat> thrust opposite to the way that the helicopter wants to spin and keeps it straight. And that's also the way that you steer. By adding more or less thrust on the tail rotor, you can make it turn. So let's fly it around and have a little fun. So then you can see what I was talking about, that the cyclic it's called. I can roll right, I can roll left, and then go backwards and forward. And then tail rotor, if I stick that, well that actually does is decrease the torque of the, uh, the speed that that tail rotor is spinning, and it makes it spin. Or if you push the other way, it actually makes that tail rotor spin faster. So at one time I'm controlling the throttle, which makes it go up and down, the cyclic, and the tail rotor. All of those things together make it fly. Where I want it to go. So that's the fixed pitch helicopter, right? The blades independently can't change pitch. Right, so then we have the swash plate, which is your cyclic control. Right, and then the tail rotor. So we have the throttle, we have the cyclic, and we have the tail. When I'm flying this, when I'm hovering it, I'm constantly making adjustments to all of those things at once. I'm adjusting the cyclic to keep it in place. I'm holding the tail to make sure it doesn't rotate when I don't want it to, and I'm also controlling the throttle finally adjusting it to keep it hovering in one spot. Now this one's stable enough that I can almost let go of the controller and it will just keep doing what it's doing. All right, so this one you can see is quite a bit bigger than the first one we had. This one, uh, you can see, has a lot more uh, going on in the rotor head here, um, a lot more moving parts than the other one had. Um, the biggest difference in this one is that it's collective pitch, meaning that each blade can change pitch independently. Right? And if, if I move the stick up and down, which this is my collective and my throttle, it's called, you can see those blades changing pitch. Right? And also, you can see them change pitch when I move the cyclic too. But you can see they're changing pitch too. With this helicopter, it was fixed pitch. So the way we made it go higher is by spinning the rotors faster. This one doesn't work the same way. This one, the rotor head speed remains constant 
And what changes is the blades can change pitch. This one handles a lot differently because it's a collective pitch system and uh, as, as opposed to the um, fixed pitch, which is like the little one. The other big difference with this one is the tail. If we look at the tail rotor here, right, there's a big difference between the two tail rotors in these. This one just has a little tiny motor that runs basically a little propeller. This one has a, um, a pitch system and a pitch slider that runs up here to a servo that runs the tail. And you can see that when I turn, when I move this stick here, instead of speeding up or slowing down the tail motor, it's actually driven by a belt that goes through the tail boom here, and the tail spins. And while it's spinning, the way that I steer the helicopter essentially is by moving my, my rudder stick on my transmitter, and you can see that changes the pitch of the blades. The other thing that this has, <clears throat> which the little one has it too, built into the uh, electronics, but it's not as easy to demonstrate, is this has a gyro, which controls the tail. Now, in the early days of RC helicopters, there weren't tail gyros, and so you were constantly fighting with that tail to get it just in the right place so that it would stay straight when you wanted to go straight. Now, with our modern technology, we have a gyro that keeps it straight. So when I, when I point the helicopter in this direction, even if wind blows it, this tail, this gyro, will adjust the tail as necessary to keep it straight. And you can see, if we turn around here so you can see this tail servo, when I move this back and forth, it's making those adjustments, right? Trying to straighten it out, right? And that's the gyro. This is called the swash plate, this thing is moving up and down. And what that does is that transfers the movement of these servos up to the rotor head while, while it's spinning, right? Because the servos are stationary, the head spins. So what that swash plate does is it takes that movement from the servos and transfers it up into the head and adjusts the blades accordingly so that it flies where you want to. So let's put this down on the floor and hover it a little bit. And then after that, we'll take it outside and you can actually see it flying back and forth a little bit. There's one thing I forgot to mention about this one before is that um, since this one is collective pitch, you can actually have negative pitch on the bit, blades. And the way this is set up is that I have 10 degrees of positive pitch um, when the, my collective stick is the whole way up and I can make 10 degrees of negative pitch when it's all the way down, which means that it can fly upside down. Now I'm not very good at this yet, but it can be done. 